Thanks God for being here. We thank him for our life that was strength. We're going to go open up this this morning. We're going to ask someone to give us a song and someone to give us a God 
and he's caught up with them at last. Then he said, verse 17, he said, but dear brothers, after we left you and had only been away for very little time, he said, but our hearts never left you, of course. He said, but we tried hard to come back to see you once more. But we wanted very much to come. And he said, now Paul, I tried again and again. But Satan stopped us. And then he said, but what is it if we live for, what is what is it we live for that gives us hope, joy, and is our proud reward in crime? It is you. Yes, you will bring us much joy as we stand together before our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes back again. And verse 20 says, For you are our glory and joy. And then in, in, in Thessalonians 3, 1 through 5, it says, Finally, so Paul said, Finally, when we couldn't stand it no longer, I decided to stay in Athens. He said, And I sent Timothy, our brother, our fellow worker, minister, God's minister, to visit you to strengthen your faith and encourage you. He said, and, and to keep you from becoming faint-hearted in all the troubles you were going through. So, but of course, you know that such troubles are part of God's plan for us Christians. He said, even though we were still with you, uh, we, we warned you, even when we were with you, we warned you ahead of time that suffering would come. And then... <clears throat> He said, and he did. And then it says in verse 5, he says, Paul said when he could not bear the suspense no longer, he sent Timothy to find out whether your faith was still strong. He said, I, I was afraid that maybe Satan had gotten the best of me and that all our work had been in vain. Now, when we look closer at this lesson, it, it begins with Paul giving thanks. And to the Thessalonians, he's praising their reception to the teaching. First thing he, he says, when well, we were teaching, you didn't look at us just having saying some words, just shooting off some words. He said, but you listened and you took it in. And he was thanking them for their reception to the teaching of Christ and their faithfulness despite the Jewish opposition. Now and he's grateful that the gospel that he had given others, that he, the gospel that he and others had given to the Thessalonians, you know, had been received, had been heard, and been acted upon. And, and that God's word is now at work in you. He said, whenever, you know, whenever the importance of the apostles and their labor, whatever it was, God is now at work in the Thessalonians themselves. And it's kind of like when we were in the, in the ancient times, people went through the uh, <clears throat> priests, but now they can go directly to God. So th with the Thessalonians, God is at work among them in themselves. And, and you know, the, the apostle had been and will continue to be important for them. But now God works among them directly. Now, Paul assured the Thessalonians that God trusted them to carry the message. And he told them, he told them, <clears throat> he told them the message preached to them was not just their words. Paul said, no, it ain't nothing we making up. We are messengers of God. And this is what God has told us to tell you. He told them he preached to them. The message he preached to them was just was not just their words, but God's. He said, you paid careful attention to the way we lived too. He said, now, we didn't just come in and just talk to you and preach the word. We lived the word. You saw how we lived. You watched how we lived in the community. And, and that gave you confirmation that we were messengers of God. You know, as believers, sometimes the more, you know, we, we might could be more effective if we were humble, if we were humble, and excuse me, we might be more effective if we were more humble. 
know, instead of talking to people as a friend who is concerned about their salvation, and, and sometimes we talk rough to people, like uh, we're up there and they're down here. And when you do that, you turn them off, you don't get them no more. Very seldom do you get them anymore. You can't get their attention no more because the way you present it, what you had to say may have been great and it may have would have helped, but you got to also know how to present it. And that has a lot to do with how we do sometimes. And so <clears throat> when, we, when we do that, you know, we need to be humble. We need to ask God for guidance. That's why staying in close contact with God will show us how we can, how we're supposed to talk to somebody, how we're supposed to work with somebody. And, uh, and see, sometimes, you know, I've gone to, you've gone to churches and you heard on the, on the radio or TV or whatever, sometimes they actually seem like they're bullying and say, y'all better do this and y'all better do that, y'all better listen to me and all this kind of stuff. Sometimes you bullied the congregation, you bullied people, and then you can't get their you can't get their attention no more. Because when they see you, they ignore you, they go the other way. So this is one of the things. And sometimes when they do that, possible new converts, they end up turning them away from the church. And so sometimes people say, No, I don't want nothing to do with that. I don't want nothing to do with that. But you got to know how to talk to people. You got to understand we are all at different stages in our life. And we don't, we're all at different stages in our spiritual life too. And, and you can't just have one thing for everybody. So what he said, but Paul didn't do that. Paul and the uh, and, and the missionaries didn't do that. You know, and, and sometimes we're not effective also because People look at our lives, <clears throat> and people look at our lives, and they see, they hear us talk the talk, but they don't see us walk the walk. And so when you can't be affected, but Paul and his missionaries, they said, you watch us. You watch how we live in, our, in the community among people. So you know we are messengers of God. The, the word that we say is word from God. And he says, uh, we, all, we live what we talk about. And, and sometimes, you like, see, someone is always watching, no matter what. It may even be a child, but somebody is watching. And somebody may decide to follow you. And, and then, and Paul and, and, and the missionary, you know, they will run out of town. The strong, you know, run out of town. The strong between the strong bond between Paul and the church was like between a, um, a loving parent and, and a um, the little child, and, and it made a separation hard on Paul. He did not want to be with them, but he, you know, they were attacked and they were run out of town because the people, some people, did not like what he was preaching about. They didn't want to hear that, and so. Um, they ran him out of town, him and his group out of town. And, and it was hard on Paul because he was forced to, to, leave the, to leave there. And he didn't want to. He had some other things he wanted to talk to him. But he had to go. Physically, he was from them, but his heart was still there with them. And, and he had no choice. He made attempts to try to come back. But he says, Satan, oh, stop this. Now, at this point, I think evidently, God did not mean for them to go at that time because if God wanted to send them, Satan couldn't stop them because God is in charge of all of them. And, and we know God is above Satan, so he, God must have had another plan. And then, you know, that was a family type of bond between Paul and the Thessalonian Christians. Now, Paul feels as if the Thessalonians are his spiritual children. And he bragged about them. He was bragging about them as his pride and joy. Now, we, uh, we know that uh, Paul, Paul wanted to go back and see them so bad. But 
every time something blocked him. And he said they brought so much joy and hope and pride to him. And 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 other and him and the other missionaries. And then a hope that the divine work that started in them would just continue to increase to their mature in the in the word. And and then he feel like if he that way, all his work would not be in vain. Now Paul said in his letter, said, oh, so when we couldn't stand being separated from you any longer and could find no way to visit you ourselves, we stayed in Athens and sent Timothy to check on you, to cheer you up so you wouldn't be discouraged by these hard times. And you see, um, <clears throat> Paul was concerned that out of all the work they had done there in Thessalonica, that maybe since they got run out of town, there's no telling he was thinking about what happened to the people left there, the new converts and even the older ones. He, he was concerned about it. So that, that was one of the things where he couldn't get any word or anything to find out what was going on. So that, that worried him. And he says, uh, so Paul, you know, Paul and the other missionary reminds us of how it was, you know, when we first started with the COVID, it seemed like everything was shut down, you know, nobody was busy or nothing. But the thing with us, we were so blessed, we had telephone, computer, and all those things, we could still keep in touch with people. But can you imagine how it must have felt for Paul? There was no word, nobody could tell him anything. And so then he couldn't go back there. So he was very disheartened. And, and when we, when COVID first started, everything shut down there, seemed like for a while. And like I said, but we were blessed with the telephone. We had communication. We never had to use it before. It was a shock to us because we never had to live like that before. And so this was hard on us because we had relatives. Sometimes we didn't hear from them. Maybe they had gotten sick and they had moved to a hospital or somewhere. But I'm saying, you didn't hear from them like you do today. You know, you, you didn't know what they were doing on like. Sometimes if they said they were sick and in the hospital, we started worrying because we knew how effective that COVID was being. And so Paul felt the same way about the converts he left over in Thessalonica. He didn't have time to stay there and teach them like he wanted to because he got run out of time. So this was this was real hard. But like I said, I thought about how it was with us with the COVID. And then after we even with communication, we couldn't get back together like we are today. So that was hard on some of us. We missed our fellow, you know, our fellow Christian, our fellow believer. We missed them because we missed coming into the house of God and talking. You don't really realize how you missed something until you ain't got it no more. So Paul missed them. And, and but it could, and then he couldn't go visit them either. So I understand what he's saying when he said how he missed them. And he was so happy with the progress report he got from Timothy. He said uh, um, in verse 6, which is not part of our lesson, but it tells me that that's the moment he said, now Timothy had just returned, and he brings welcome to me that your faith and love are as strong as ever. He said, you remember when I, I first said, they remember our first visit to them and the joy. They want to see them just as much as they want to see us. So it's just that when you have to, when you're away from some somebody or people that you like, that you love, that you used to be around, it's hard. So this is how it was with Paul and the missionary. And he was, you know, he felt the same way when we feel the same, when we pray. Uh, you know, another thing, Paul had, Paul had gotten and preached the word. People had come to Christ. And then, you know, it's like he got it going on. And, and then, it, then he got run out of town. So, you know, when you look at it like this, just like we do, you know, when you talk with someone and, and you try to help them come to Christ and all that kind of stuff, you see them later on. Isn't it wonderful when you see they are still on the battlefield? You say, Lord, I must have done something right. Oh, 
and I did this on every arm. They are still out there. You make you feel good. And that's the way Paul was. He was so happy when Timothy came back and told him, said, they are still going. They're still in the faith. They still got it going on. Oh, Paul was very happy. Then he really wanted to sin. But he was glad of that report from Timothy. And, and so he said, uh, um, and see, when Paul, because some things we can learn from Paul, like for instance, um, he said, um, you know, Paul addressed his Christians as brothers. You know, all over that he would say brother and brothers or whatever. He did not claim like he was superior over them. He didn't act like he was higher than and more important than them. He he talked to them as a brother to brother or sister to sister. And this is one of the key things that we could be more effective if we learn how to do that. And he recognized, see, Paul said, Paul come a long way. He recognized the quality of all the redeemed in the sight of the heavenly Father. Paul had come a long way from being a Pharisee to a place where he could consider Gentiles equal before the Lord. Now, you know, he came from a long way because he was the one who was crucified. He just as much for the gospel then, after his encounter with God, he was just as much for God as he was against God before. And you know there had to be quite a change. Only God could bring about such a dramatic change. Because Paul had planned on changing, I'm sure. When he, when he encountered God on the Damascus Road, he was on his way to pick up some old people and bring back that persecutor. But God stopped him. And after that, he was never the same. He said that he was blind for about three days. And God told Ananias to go down there and anoint him. Ananias was terrified. He said, no, go on. You know how he is. I ain't going there. I'm scared. He said, I'm always taking care of it. He's not going to bother me. You go and anoint his eyes so he can see. He said, because I got some work for him to do. And he's going to suffer much for me. Just like he made my people suffer. He's going to suffer a lot for me. And so Ananias went ahead and knowing him. And when he did, it, he became Paul. He was no longer soft or tossed as he became Paul. So when Paul, he was a Pharisee, so now Paul is, is considering, you know, the Gentiles to be equal before God. He's all for salvation. He's all for doing the right thing. Quite a change. Quite a change. So when we when we encounter people, when we're with people, what we want to do is that first of all, we want to ask God to help us get our house in order. And then when we leave, when we get back, we will ask God, teach us how to work with other people. Teach us how to tell people about God. Teach us how to witness to them. And by all means, let us walk the walk. You see, sometimes I see you in church in one way, but when I see you outside church, you're another way. That's confusing. That can be very confusing to people. So you've got to walk the walk if you're going to talk the talk. And you've got to think about somebody is looking at you. And you got to think about, what the, you know, all the things that you tell people. It's kind of like situation. I had I um, all the time, you know. I love that song about when it, when the waves are over my head, it's under God's feet. So this this week I was dealing with some situation, so I had to remember. I said, okay, it doesn't over my head, so it must be under your feet. And the, and you got you got to teach your own self. You got to you got to think about this thing. No matter what you tell somebody else, can you apply it to your own self when your time come around? That's a true test. That's a true thing. But Paul had changed so much. He and his missionaries, and they were doing good there in Thessalonica. But they run them out of there. It seems like Paul was always trying to escape something, even after he became a child of God. But God said Paul would suffer for him. So Paul, he knows what it's like. And he says, uh, he remember how he did the Christian. And he can understand now what they must have been going through. Because look at what he did. 
And then, you know, Paul's letter, you know, he gives new believer guidance. He gives holy living and hope for the future, you know, and encouragement through suffering. And the Thessalonian church served as a good example. Look what they have gone through. They were still holding on. By the time Timothy went back to went there to visit them, and they were still holding on, growing strong a little bit each day. So, and we can take inventory and, and of ourselves and see how we may do it. Could we be an example for someone? Excuse me. I said, we can take inventory. Look at of our sin. Look at our sin. And look how Paul did. And, and look what, how the church of Thessalonians was. I'm saying, it was an example. Oh, yeah. It held on, even through hard times. See, that's a, that's a hard thing. Sometimes you say, no matter what, I'm going to hold on. But it can get rough. Yeah. Not that you don't mean to, but you can. it can get rough. And where you feel like throwing up your hand. You just feel like throwing up your hand. But, you know, somehow God brings you through it all. But I'm saying it can get rough. So whatever you say, say when we try to make sure that you that you that you can handle what you say. And and it's, it can be very hard sometimes, no matter how hard you try. And see, just like we all come here this morning. Nobody knows what's going on with us behind the scenes. We see each other's face, and sometimes we're smiling, sometimes we ain't smiling. But we just, you know, look, you looking at the outer appearance. God looks inside. Nobody knows what you're going through. Even if it's no more than just having to get up this morning. <laughs> but you're going through something. You're going through something all the time. But then God told us, as believers of Christ, it'll be like this for us. We're going to have trials. We're going to have tribulation. We're going to be mistreated and all this stuff. But he said, hold on. Just keep on holding on. Things are going to change for you. It may not change on this side, but if I hang in there, I know I'm going to carry this mess on the other side. But I know I'm just going to be in there. So all I got to do is do the best I can to hang on. So this is what this is what Paul was telling them. Said when you when you came to Christ, when you decided to be a uh, follower of Christ, you know we told you when we were there. So when we were there with you, we told you you're gonna have these problems. You're gonna have some trials and tribulation. It's gonna be rough. So but you got to hang in there. This is the this is the way it is with God's people. Because if we have our battlefield on this side, then when we are living in this side, we got a good place to go. So he's saying, you know, as long as you follow me, look what happened to me. Christ said, I was crucified. All this, so look what happened to me. So you follow me, you're going to get some of the same stuff. But you got to be able to be willing to hang in there. It can be rough. Now, there's no doubt about that. Life can be rough sometimes. Sometimes you wonder what in the world is going on with, with my situation. But you hang in there. Called. Like I said, when it's over your head, it's under his feet. So, so you just got to hang on there. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just thank God for you. He gave me you the, the, uh, the word to teach to us this morning that awesome lesson. And then I was like, back when you say, treat other like you want to be treated. And you know, some people are taught down to other people. But what they don't understand when you're talking, talking down on me, you right there with me because you ain't no higher than I am. So you should put your thinking cap on before you go that far. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. God said everyone is somebody. And yeah. in his eye, everybody is the same. And so you got to remember, too, that not, if not everybody's at your level. That's one thing. The first thing is this. Everybody's not at your level. So if you know more than the next person, but nevertheless, bring it to a point where everybody can understand. Where if someone is 
highly educated. That's fine. Then it's just a relief for you. Mm-hmm. If someone is is medium, that's pretty good. Some of the things you might understand. But what if you have a, some older people that have does not understand a lot of things? Now they didn't get nothing out of that unless you broke it down to you brought it down, broke it down, brought it to home, right where we live. Right. You got to, you know, if everybody don't get nothing out of it, it's not hard to work doing. Right. So when you're doing something, remember it's not all about you. It, it's about God, especially something like this. It's all about God in the first place. That's right. So He just using you. You know, you just an instrument for Him. Mm-hmm. So you know, you have to be careful. I don't care how many words I might know or something. I don't need to use them. <laughs> It doesn't help me. It doesn't make me any more popular than I am right now. And that's not. <laughs> and that's not. So why would I need to build myself? Up? Build the Lord up and he'll take care of whatever I need to have. He don't want to know. And we all need to stay Lord and I'm so glad to be able to use it. Oh yeah. And that's the only way he can use mm-hmm. if we're we humble and we're teachable, yeah. we're reachable. Yeah. And that, that's what he's looking for. Mm-hmm. And this is what Paul was telling, you know, talking about. You know, they didn't try to be no other, even though God had given them the word to take to the Thessalonians. It didn't bother Paul. He wanted, he wanted converts, he wanted to see people change, come to know Christ. Mm-hmm. He didn't care about his name. Remember. And one, I can't remember exactly where it was. When Paul got in jail one time, the people were saying, okay, he was preaching. Now he's in jail. What's he going to do now? And Paul said, I don't care who preached the gospel as long as it be preached. <laughs> so God doesn't care. If I don't want to come to Sunday school and do Sunday school, he got somebody else. Okay, no, no, let's sit down. I got somebody else. <laughs> and he had so if we don't want to get up, come to church and serve the Lord, we stay home. He'll just stay right there. And then when we want to get up one day, we won't be able to get up. You hear a lot of people say, you know, I would love to go to church. If I was able, I'd go to church. But they have been able. Mm-hmm. And they went everywhere but church. Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful how we live. In fact, we have to decide. We're going to live for God. We're going to live so God can use us in the songs in any time and any way. Mm-hmm. That's the only way you can be ready. Amen. Okay. Sister Tisha, you also said earlier talking about how Paul was excited to see uh, the Christians and uh, those whom he had uh, previously been, uh, been a teacher of and they were the students how he was just excited to go to see him. You know, I, I wish we had that excitement in the church for, <clears throat> for, one, for one another. I wish we had that zeal that we know that we're going to church, we're going to be around like-minded Christians. I wish we had that zeal to know that no matter what comes our way, that God is still in control and he's going to take care of the situation. We are not there. But that doesn't mean that we stop trying. That doesn't mean that we quit trying to achieve. Uh, and that's one of the things that a lot of people uh, find themselves because uh, uh, maybe maybe uh, I'm not there, or maybe uh, he or she is not there. But some people just stop. And we can't stop. Mm-hmm. We got to keep pressing mm-hmm. towards the mark of the higher calling. Whether anybody else lives the life. And I believe, and I know, that like, I've got to be here. And I've got to be excited. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they're not at that point. But I know I'm going to worship and praise God. And mm-hmm. this is this is who this is who we come for. Uh, it's not for man, it's not to show man anything. It's to give God the glory, the honor, the praise, and thank him. Or another that you know, I can do it at home, I can I can read, I can pray, 
got to make it plain and simple. The ones on the bottom, so the ones on the bottom can get it, like myself. And the other ones will get it. Uh, eloquent words, um, if people on your level, you're in the room with that, with, with all eloquent, eloquent people, then that's fine. But when you got a little old guy like me in the room, you need to make it plain and simple. And a lot of times, that's what I see happening in the church, uh, uh, in the community and meetings and stuff. And people... When they hear a word that sounds good, everybody start using it. They don't even know what the word means. It just sounds good. I mean, you know, and, and, and my thing is, uh, uh, like I always say, I ain't there yet. But at some point in time, 
something should kick in. You should get just a little bit, grow just a little bit more than you were yesterday. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I just, people are some strange folk. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it's about impressing folk. I ain't trying to impress nobody. And, 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 uh, and what I do ain't for me. I'm trying to encourage other folk. It's just like uh, um, election time. I ain't worrying about who be the president. I have survived. I'm 60, I'll be 62 in December. I survived through all the rest. I'm going to survive through the next one. So I'm not worried about it. But we got to make it plain and simple. That's the only way. It ain't just older folk. <laughs> I mean, I've been like that all my life. <laughs> it got to be plain and simple. Uh, I mean, I, I'm so plain and simple, I make up words. Because people get it, you know. <laughs> so do. People like I had a lady, um, um, real, real professional lady. She said, that's one thing I like about you. She said, I like the way you make up words. <laughs> people catch it, you know. But uh, I appreciate the message. Uh, you always, always make it plain and simple. Amen. I don't know any other way because I'm thinking about some people in here, you know, higher level than I am, and maybe they can talk bear with it while I deal with the people who maybe don't know. So I'm saying, I don't know but one way to do it. Just bring it straight, plain, right down to earth. And then we all get some out. And I thank you for that. Thank God too for letting you do that. Yeah, that's the only way I know to do. Let us be plain. So, you know, just don't have time to be playing around with words and playing around with anything. It's too late. The sun is almost out. And we don't need to be making up words. <laughs> for that wonderful word this morning. Thank you, Trustee Wood, for that wonderful word this morning. Uh, before we get over to you, I still like to ask that if someone here from the Sing class to respond to the lesson this morning. If they got out of the lesson this morning. I know we have some ideas, some remarks, some, but anyone from the church, I think, see you out here at Hamilton. Yeah, I learned that we need to treat others like we want to be treated. Amen. Amen. Maybe if anyone else before we close out, before we go to you. If not, we will hear from the youth at this time. Good morning. 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 At home, they get to finish it today. I uh, with 10 players and a little PowerPoint that they can have and go back and just visit and kind of remind them of disobedient, disobey God, God will punish you in different ways. So, this is our final chapter on the plate. Thank you, Christine Williams, for that brief lesson for the youth this morning. Now we hear from our secretary this morning.
The minutes for the Anderson Chapel and St. Stephen's Sunday Church School for July 4, 2024. Sunday School was called to order at 10 o'clock by Deacon Ray May. <clears throat> Opening song was Near the Cross by Mother Barnes. <clears throat> Prayer was given by Reverend Faison. Lesson topic, Hope in Christian Fellowship. Background passage, 1 Thessalonians 2, 13 through 3, 5. Key verse, we also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as what is it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. That's from 1 Thessalonians 2, 13. The lesson was reviewed for 43 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Remarks were given by representative from the classes. Attendance is 19, offers $50. The weather is hot. All officers remain the same. City Secretary, Sister Lois Lee. Thank you this morning for the ministry. Are there any correction on the minutes this morning? If not, we will see the minutes that have been read this morning. We thank Mother Lewis for those minutes this morning. So we're going to just stand and close out with the word of the and we're going to turn those to be ready for the devotion this morning. Amen. 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 